European film festival, there's even a Japanese film festival, but why isn't there an indigenous film festival in the nation's capital? That has changed. The Indigenous Film Festival has just opened in Ottawa, and we have a few highlights. We've been getting the question of how big are the puppets? Um, how long does it actually take to do uh, a show? While on the other side of the continent, a Cree director takes her fictional characters to Dene country. Good evening. Welcome to APTN National News. I'm Melissa Ridgen. The family of Colton Bushi has filed lawsuits against the RCMP and Gerald Stanley. This comes nearly two years after the 22-year-old Cree youth was shot and killed on Stanley's farm near Bigger, Saskatchewan. The lawsuit against Stanley claims he caused the death of Bushi through negligence, recklessness, or by an intentional act. The Red Pheasant First Nation youth was fatally shot in the head on Stanley's farm. In February, a jury acquitted Stanley of second-degree murder after he claimed it was an accident. The second suit, against the RCMP, claims officers unlawfully entered and searched Bushi's home after his death and were not respectful when informing his mother he died. The claims have not been tested in court. There is no reason to believe for the RCMP on reasonable grounds that there was any evidence inside that home. So they either had the obligation to get a search warrant or they had the obligation not to go into that home without consent. Victoria, B.C. is set to become one of the first cities in Canada to tear down a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald. While Macdonald is known and celebrated as the country's first prime minister, he has also been long criticized for helping establish residential schools. The move to remove the monument comes from the city's mayor and several local First Nations. They say it's an important act dedicated to, to uh, Victoria's reconciliation process with Indigenous people. Steps away from Victoria City Hall, there's a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald, one that's been standing for nearly 40 years. But the monument memorializing Canada's first Prime Minister may not be around much longer. If we're serious about reconciliation, we have to take action. Victoria's Mayor Lisa Help says the statue will soon be removed, a decision that comes after lengthy discussions with several local First Nations. We've been gathering for a year, uh, having meals together, hearing some really painful stories. Most Canadians know McDonald as the father of Confederation. While he's historic and familiar, he's also polarizing. He played a role in creating and defending residential schools. The archaic education system harmed and abused thousands of Indigenous people. Taking a statue down is, is very symbolic and, and very impactful visually. Removing statues or other images linked to historic figures may be controversial, but it's not new. In January, Halifax put a monument of its city founder in storage. Edward Cornwallis once offered a cash bounty to anyone who scalped and killed Mi'kmaq people. And last year, Ottawa changed the name of the building that houses the Prime Minister's office. For decades, it was dedicated to Hector Louis Langevin, another architect of residential schools. Back in Victoria, many residents support the statue's removal. However, there are those who strongly oppose. That's, that's stupid. No, I think it should stay. City Council voted on the issue today and passed a motion with only one dissenting voice. The statue will now come down as early as Saturday. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. We want to hear what you think. Here's how to continue the conversation. You can send your emails to news at aptn.ca. Find us online at aptnnews.ca and on youtube.com slash aptnnews. Also, you can follow APTN uh, News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Indigenous news. We have an update on the devastating wildfires burning around Telegraph Creek, about 1,800 kilometers northwest of Vancouver. Two wildfires in the area have now turned into one. Yesterday's fear is now today's reality. According to the BC Wildfire Service, this brings the size of the blaze from 7,800 hectares to 28,000 hectares of active wildfire in the area. As of right now, there have been 40% structure loss to Telegraph Creek. It's been an emotional time for sure. You know, I'm, I'm not much of a crier, but I do wake up at 6 a.m. with tears in my eyes. And it's amazing to um, feel the hurt you can for, for your neighbors and your members, but it's also great to see how communities come together. 
Happy International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. It was commemorated in New York today. The day was created by the United Nations in December 1994. This year's theme was migration and freedom of movement across international borders. This was brought home at a press conference. A Tonawatam uh, woman talked about her nation, which straddles the Arizona-Mexico border. And I basically grew up um, watching my community be militarized and occupied. Um, I'm basically a part of the last uh, generation of my people to know what it's like to move freely. Um, if you are to go down to the Tonawatam Nation today, um, you would see that there's um, checkpoints to every entrance and exit to um, the Tonawatam Nation. You'll see more Border Patrol agents than you do our own police. Um, you'll see um, surveillance cameras on top of hills. We need to take a break, but first, here's tomorrow's weather starting on the East Coast. In St. John's, we got 26, 23 in Charlottetown, 22 in Halifax, 18 in La Grande River and Nain, 25 in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, Val d'Or, 24, 20, 23 in Quebec, and 26 in Montreal. Peterborough's in at 25, so is Ottawa. 26 in Toronto, 24 in Sarnia. Capus Casing, 26, as well as Timmins. Sudbury's 25, Elliott Lakes, 26, 30 in Sioux Lookout. Churchill's 21, hot again in Manitoba, 31 in Puxtawagan, and God's Lake, 30 in Thompson, 32 in Norway House. 31 for Barron's River, 32 in Dauphin and Brandon, 31 in Winnipeg. 33 in Saskatoon, 35 in Regina, Yorkton's in at 33. Some mostly cloudy in northern Saskatchewan, but 34 in Buffalo Narrows, 35 in Larage, and 32 in Meadow Lake. Up until seven years ago, Ottawa didn't have an Indigenous film festival, but it's starting to come into its own with this year's edition. The event's grand opening was last night, and APTN's Todd Lamarand has more. That's from Drew Hayden Taylor's film Searching for Winnetou, his often funny look at Germany's fascination with Indigenous culture. You know, it's really worth seeing, especially in, in Canada's age of reconciliation. Festival co-founder Christopher Wong helped set up on Victoria Island. Searching for Winnetou is supposed to kick off the Asanapka Festival at an outdoor screening. But the weather suggests it may be a soggy affair. Wong discusses how to hold the screening undercover because of the threat of thunderstorms later on. Um, but this year, because it's too many to pick, we're going to screen here. Unless the other space is bigger. Wong and Howard Adler started the festival after wondering why Ottawa didn't have one. There's a European film festival, there's even a Japanese film festival, but why isn't there an indigenous film festival in the nation's capital? We knew about Imaginative and uh, Dream Speakers and uh, VMAF and uh, some other ones as well, and we were like, well, why isn't there one here? And the next thing we knew, we were planning it. <laughs> <laughs> Kayak to Clem to is an award-winning feature film that will be among 70 films screened at various locations around Ottawa. A few are getting their Canadian premieres, such as Dawnland. A really thought-provoking film about an important juncture in United States Indigenous history. It's, um, they made a documentary on their own version of the 60s scoop that happened, uh, the same as in Canada. Adler recommends seeing all the films, but... If I had to pick one that I'd really strongly recommend, it would be Waru. Uh, it's, a, it's a Maori film. Uh, and Rene Mahia is going to be here. Monique Manach is an Ottawa-based producer. She has two short films in the festival, Hannah Returns Home and Shannon's Basket. But while she's making a basket, what you're hearing is a creation story from my community. For years working behind the film scene, she's now out in front of it and admits some pressure to get it right as the public screens her work for the first time. So now it's me and it's my voice and it's, it's a vulnerable position to be in because, you know, suddenly people are looking at your work and, oh, and am I representing my community? 
in a way that is respectful, in a way that tells a good story. The premiere may be marred by inclement weather, but Wong sees sunny ways for the festival. The festival has been successful for now, and, and we hope to keep it going for forever. Asanabka runs through Sunday, and it includes a music festival and filmmaking workshops. Todd Lamaran, APTN National News, Ottawa. It's not every day that northern folks get to chat with people in showbiz. For the small community of Hay River, Northwest Territories, that opportunity was this week. APTN partnered with the National Film Board to bring Indigenous media to cinemas. Our reporter Charlotte Morit Jacobs sat down with one of the film directors. He doesn't know how to set a snare, how to track an animal. Oh. You may he recognize this how, popular children's show. Wapos Bay aired on APTN for over a decade. Now people in Hay River NWT can meet the director. Melanie Jackson is in the territory for the Wide Awake Indigenous Cinema Tour. Just looking at the terrain and looking at the, the, the episode that they did choose, it fits really well. It just, it matches beautifully. It's just, it's gorgeous up here. Guests will screen an episode of Wapos Bay and Mohawk Girls, along with a short film Jackson directed, titled Dancers of the Grass. But it's more than just screenings. Jackson will run a filmmaking workshop for youth interested in producing a show from start to finish. My viewpoint and my experience as an Aboriginal artist from the first thought in my head to the last frame on screen, it's how you can go, it's how you can approach filmmaking as an artist to make sure that your idea and your artistic vision gets out of your head shared with whoever is around you. Jackson says audiences are typically most excited and surprised about representation. A lot of them are surprised to see just the, the complexion of the characters. To see brown skin on TV in a puppet form and to hear the voices that are behind our series that we, you know, we were very, very specific about who we picked for which role. Jackson is known for her unique Indigenous stop-motion directing and receives many curious questions. We've been getting the question of how big are the puppets? Um, how long does it actually take to do uh, a show? Uh, just the mechanics behind everything. What's the inspiration for the stories or for the series or for the hoop dancer? You know, an artist inspiration. But then we also get the feedback from people saying that I watched that episode and I remember being on the trap line with my dad and I miss that, you know, it's a component of their life that it just flashes them back to it. The event runs Thursday at the Hay River Cinema. Charlotte Mart Jacobs, ABTN National News, Yellowknife. La Wapos Bay. A new program to help Indigenous artists and organizations was launched today in Montreal. It is one of a kind and has been years in the making. Danielle Rochette reports. Anne-Marie Jean, the executive director at the Conseil des Arts et des Lettres du Québec, says she's proud of this new program called Recognition. J'espère qu'il servira à réaliser des rêves, à créer des ponts, à faire connaître et rayonner des artistes et des organisations qui reflètent la richesse et l'importance des cultures autochtones. Jean says there are many innovative aspects that are in place to help with financial aid requests from the artistic community. In the process, we're involving the elders. In our committees, in our juries, uh, the elders will be part of it. And uh, one of their responsibilities will be also to identify the new artists that are emerging in the communities. Dozens of practitioners from the indigenous artistic and cultural communities are here to listen. Sylvie Paris is a new and one that cultural agent from the Montreal Botanical Garden. Quand on a des bourses, quand on est encouragé, quand on a le regard des pairs, mais c'est comme ça qu'on augmente la qualité de nos créations, puis qu'on peut devenir des grands artistes. Nadine Selwy, Secret Fire Productions founder, also actively participated in the development of the program. When I heard Madame Jean say, we are choosing to present this program that's going to support the needs of indigenous people and like Nadine said we have to step outside the box to enter the circle and I said thank you this is part of the decolonization process it's about decentralizing power and giving back to the people a space where their voices can be heard. Yves Sioui Durand, founder of Andina Kato Company, thinks it's a step in the right direction. What is encouraging 
it, sh it will be like the link in between the, the major artists, the senior artists, native artists, and the more younger. We try to emulate uh, the, the youngers, and that, uh, that we will all grow in terms of quality and expression. To this program, an artist can potentially receive $50,000 per project and companies will have 75% of the total cost of a project paid for. Daniel Rachet, EPTN National News, Montreal. Still in Montreal, uh, the 28th annual First People's Festival opened Tuesday night. More than 300 people attended the festival's opening. 60 films and concerts are scheduled along with several other unique activities. Last night, a selection of the best short films from emerging Indigenous filmmakers was presented. We have been so pushed away from the means of expression of the, uh, and of the, the possibility of artistic expressions in the last uh, decades that now uh, uh, that young artists, uh, we can say they are the seventh generation, uh, as we say often, they can now uh, 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 take that road and uh, uh, open new roads with uh, their own view and uh, this is uh, we are then looking for what we wish to be and not what we were uh, uh, just yesterday it's time for another short break but we'll be back with more news so stick around first here's the rest of tomorrow's weather Twenty-three in high level, twenty-six in Peace River, thirty-two in Fort McMurray, thirty-two in Edmonton, thirty-six in Calgary, thirty-nines in Lethbridge and Medicine Hat. Over on the West Coast, Bella Coola at twenty-eight, thirty in Campbell River, twenty-six in Vancouver and Victoria, twenty-one in Fort Nelson, twenty-six in Fort St. John, Prince George is in at twenty-seven. Fifteen in Whitehorse and Watson Lake and Mayo, sixteen in Dawson City and Beaver Creek. 14 in Wati, 18 in Yellowknife, Fort Simpson's in at 12, Trout Lake 14 as well as Fort Laird. Saks Harbor is at 0, 10 in Colville Lake, 9 in Deline, 10 in Cambridge Bay, 9 in Repulse Bay, 14 at Baker's Lake, and 11 at Whale Cove. Uh, Goy Haven is 8, Arctic Bay 6, Cape Dorset is 8, and Iqaluit 10. A guitarist from Six Nations is joining an elite crowd of musicians. Dwayne LaForme has been invited to play with the house band at the Native American Music Awards. As Beverly Andrews reports, all those long hours of practicing, playing gigs, and hauling his gear around is about to pay off. I can't take it anymore. Dwayne LaForme might be singing the blues, but these days, he's more tickled pink. Strumming on the guitar his dad got him when he was a boy, LaForme has developed his musical talents for over 30 years. Probably about 12, 13 years old, down on Six Nations where I grew up. My oldest brother used to sit in the front yard and play the guitar, and by chance it was blues he played. Then I used to sit for hours on end watching him, watching him, and just took in the music. And those long hours of work have landed him an invite to join the Ed Coban Group, the house band for the Native American Music Awards to be held in Upper New York State. Ed Coban, first saw the farm play on social media, invited him to a jam. He came and played with no, we didn't tell him any songs, we didn't tell him what we were gonna play, we just said, come on down dude, we'll, we'll, we'll try. And everything we played just flowed like, like he'd been with us for, for years. The Ed Coban Group performs back up to the performers at the awards gala. The Native American Music Award celebrates Indigenous artists and works to recognize and advance Native American music. Every year at the Nannies, you know, First Nations people from Canada are always represented in the, in the, you know, the awards and the nominees and the presenters. And it just seemed it also made a perfect sense to have have Dwayne kind of represent that as well. LaForme will be the only Canadian in the group and will play lead guitar. I think Ed is a bit more versatile than I am. So I think I'm going to provide the uh, blues end of the band. 
The gig will give LaForme a chance to play with some of Indigenous music's biggest talents. Performers from across North America attend the NAMIs, as they are known. It isn't something I ever thought I was going to be a part of. Uh, myself not being an award winner, but to be a part of this band for the awards, that in itself is an award in my eyes. So I'm really looking forward to it and looking forward to making a lot of blues with these fellows. The form is almost entirely self-taught, with some help from fellow musicians. He says you can never learn enough on the guitar. Really, that's what the blues is all about. It, it's something you can't learn in school. It's something reading music doesn't teach you. It's all about feel. The sounds of it, the grooves, uh, the simplicity of it. The Native American Music Awards will be held on October 12th in Niagara Falls, New York. Beverly Andrews, APT National News, Brantford. Walter Linklater, a much-loved and influential elder, has died in Saskatoon last weekend. CTV's Ashley Field takes a look back at his life. This is where you would often find Walter Linklater. Although a quiet man, his wife says he was committed to his community and reconciliation. For Walter, it was important for the community to understand that uh, we can bring the two cultures together and get along. But it was a long road for Linklater, born in Fort Francis, Ontario, when he was five, taken, placed in a residential school, an experience he often spoke about. I had an identity, but I didn't know what it was. So I, I started to drink and I became addicted to alcohol for 16 years after the residential schools. But Linklater would learn to overcome that pain, finding tradition and sharing its importance with others. Today, I live in peace. I forgave them. Linklater went on to become a teacher, a profession through which he met his wife of 59 years. The couple had nine children, dozens of grandchildren, and fostered more than 350 kids. It was as if he led a, a candle in the darkness for us to follow out of this uh, despair that we all lived in. Lyndon says his father was a role model, making him and his siblings the people they are today. We are uh, bridge builders relationship builders, uh, we're advocates, you know, uh, and we're, we're strong, proud, uh, cultural people. Over the years, Linklater became a familiar face in Saskatoon, providing elder services to city council and the swearing-in of police chiefs. He also helped name the Chief Mistawasis Bridge, just one more mark among many left on this community. On Sunday morning, Linklater passed away in his home at the age of 79. Death is a ceremony. It'll always be for us. We were well prepared. Our cultural way of life brings healing to us. And despite his passing, Linklater's legacy will live on through his accomplishments, the lives he touched, and his example. Ashley Field, CTV News, Saskatoon. That's all the news I have for you on this Thursday, August 9th, but I'll be back with more tomorrow. And you can always visit us on our website, aptnnews.ca, in the in-between time. I'm Melissa Ridgen. Good night.